hypothetically in the suburbs of Chicago in the United States or Melbourne, Australia, or uh, Manchester, England, anywhere. There were two young couples married about a year and they lived in a town in the outer suburbs of a major city. And in this particular town, there were two obstetricians. So both couples went to the obstetricians, one to one, one to the other. One obstetrician was a very good and competent obstetrician and he went through the normal explanations, the importance of nutrition and rest and uh, the stages of fetal and embryonic development and what physiological uh, changes to take place over the forthcoming months. And then he explained clinically about some of the medical implications potentially of, of pregnancy. What is an episiotomy? What is a uh, cesarean section and so forth? And then he recommended this couple go together to a Le Mans course. Now, there's different antenatal courses for couples, unfortunately, some based on yoga, but a more traditional one is called Le Mans. So they go there, and these courses are typically led by an older woman, usually a midwife or an obstetric nurse who's had a few babies herself. She's experienced both... Uh, medically and experienced in her own personal life of being a mother. So she begins leading the courses. And they have lectures for the husbands and how the husbands can encourage the wives and do the exercises with them, the stretching and the breathing in anticipation of what's coming. You know, when they're talking about possibility of voluntary epidural, voluntary cesarean section, should it become a very difficult labor, uh, episiotomy and so forth. And they're going through the courses together, breathing, stretching, stretching, breathing, meeting with other couples going through the same thing. And it's going on for weeks and months and they're getting ready for the baby to come as the pregnancy progresses. When the time comes, the husband is right with his wife, and he's coaching her and encouraging her. Now, I must admit, although I like the idea of this and I approve of it, and I've done it myself and known of others who've done it, <clears throat> ultimately it's the good lady who has the baby. <laughs> it's easier for the guy than it is for his bride. Nonetheless, they go through it together. He encourages her. They've prepared for it. It is proven repeatedly through clinical studies that these courses do help both physically and psychologically in anticipation of the birth of the baby. Meanwhile, this other couple goes to another obstetrician. And this other obstetrician says, don't worry about it. The baby's just going to pop out. Don't worry about labor. Don't worry about contractions. Don't worry. Don't, you don't need to know about things like cesarean sections. None of that's going to happen. Or if it does, it'll happen before the labor begins. Don't even concern yourself. Just think of the joy and the blessing and the love and the excitement of the baby. Well, the couple doing the Lamont's course told the same thing. Expect the contractions, expect the labor, but don't let that be your focus. Let the focus be the love, the excitement, the expectation, the blessings that is going to be bought by the baby. Well, the time comes. Which mother do you think is going to be better equipped to handle labor? And if the labor becomes medically complicated, suppose the cord goes around the baby's neck where the baby is malpositioned. Suppose labor goes on beyond 24 hours. Suppose there's rippage, tearage. Muscles have not been conditioned to stretch that much by the breathing and stretching exercises. She's been not psychologically prepared for it, not physically. Neither is her husband to coach her through it. Which couple is in better shape? Which obstetrician is a good doctor? And which one is a quack? 
the fact is, babies are born by the force of gravity and by contraction. They're pushed out through the birth canal. They don't pop out of the navel. Now the scripture tells us, for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. The Greek text, as I pointed out before, uses a medical, actually a surgical term, kolobo, a surgical incision, as it were. For the sake of the elect, the suffering of the church, the tribulation, will be cut short, and the man-child, the baby, removed. Repeatedly, we see this image of maternal labor, even in the Old Testament in Jeremiah. Certainly, we see it in John 16. Certainly, we see it in the Olivet Discourse and in Revelation 12. Repeatedly, contractions preceding the birth of the baby. This is the plain and unambiguous teaching of Scripture and of the Lord Jesus himself. We read the following in John 16. He's talking about this and what's transpiring whenever a woman in verse 21 is in labor. She has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a child has been born into the world. Once that baby comes, mother and baby are doing well, that is all the husband and father wants to know. Mother goes to sleep for well-deserved rest until it's time to nurse the baby for the first time. Wonderful, beautiful, nothing but love, nothing but joy, nothing but blessing, nothing but incitement and anticipation of more joy, more love, and more blessing to come. Good, very good. But the labor was a reality. Today we have an ignorant pseudo-spirituality that is propagated by the propagators of the pre-tribulational error. Now remember, the early church did not believe this. It can be documented from patristic history. The apostles did not teach it to the early church. Major pre-trib debaters like Dr. March, Mark Hitchcock, a man I like and respect, successfully debated the errors of Hank Hanegraaff concerning the date and authorship of the book of Revelation. And Mark Hitchcock rightly cited the Irenaeus, Polycarp, Hegesippus, Papias line of patristic history from the church fathers concerning the date of the book of Revelation and its authorship. But that same line shows that Irenaeus taught that according to Polycarp, John and the apostles were never pre-trip. This stuff was invented. I go to countries where the church is persecuted, Vietnam, China. Those people are always in tribulation. We forget that the a good obstetrician sends the young couple to that course. Focus on the love of the baby, as Jesus said in John 16. But know what precedes it. They go into this abysmally absurd religious rhetoric that is spiritually bankrupt, completely abject, devoid of all reason. That is like saying, you are waiting for birth pangs. We're waiting for the baby. The two are not mutually exclusive. A loving husband and father wants his pregnant wife to have the best obstetrician in town. He wants an obstetrician going to prepare her and prepare them as a couple for what's coming, to anticipate and to be able to manage what lays ahead. Could it be demonstrated by one statistical study after another? These Lamont's courses 
actually do help most people. But then there's the quack. Don't worry about it. The baby is going to pop out of the navel, not through the birth canal with contractions. Don't worry about the Antichrist. Don't worry about any of these things. Don't worry that Jesus said he'll be hated by all nations. Don't worry about Philipsis. Falsely equating Philipsis with Orge. Falsely calling tribulation wrath. Two different words in Greek. Pseudo exegesis. Very poor linguistic scholarship. In fact, bogus linguistic scholarship. We shouldn't let people like that practice obstetric medicine. Neither should we let them teach eschatology. The husband wants his bride prepared. Jesus wants his bride prepared. My anger is at no one but the devil. But the truth must be told. Thomas Ice, you are a quack. Paul Wilkinson, you are a quack. I am prepared on the day of judgment to give account to the Lord for every syllable I just stated. If I did not love him and love his bride, I wouldn't care what you believed. It's time to prepare for the realities of the future. Get yourself a good obstetrician. Get away from those quacks. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcasts and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.